Today we're going to talk about Science Unit 2, Lesson 3, The Discovery of the DNA Structure. And just to give you an overview of this lesson, um, we're going to try to set students up for success with reading about this fairly difficult topic. And so they're going to have three shots at understanding the structure of DNA. First, they're going to read the Watson and Crick original article from the journal Nature. So it's a one-page research article um, from 1953 where they talk about their initial findings in the structure of DNA. Then they're going to read a popular science article from 1963 after Watson and Crick won the Nobel Prize to kind of put it into context, right? What's the popular view of what's going on with this DNA thing that's been discovered just a decade ago? And they'll read both of those and start to draw the structure of DNA before they get to the textbook. Um, and so they won't read um, Phelan 5.2 until after they've sort of had their own stab at really understanding what's going on in terms of how DNA is structured. They'll also watch a couple of videos where Watson's talking about the discovery uh, of DNA. So by the time that they get to that textbook chapter, the Phelan chapter, which when you look at it, it's just loaded with information and it would be kind of overwhelming and confusing to just go directly there. By the time they get there, we built a need to know. So they'll have some questions that they can get answered by reading about it in the textbook. And you'll find that they really focus in a whole lot more because we built up that um, scaffolding for success in reading about this pretty complex topic. Um, students are also going to reflect on the learning processes and the knowledge that they gain throughout. So every time they do another one of those activities, it's going to be thinking back to what they already learned and building the new stuff onto it. So as they think about DNA structure, they're going to read and visualize with each article. So this is another way of transforming information. So in Unit 1, they really, we really focused in on using science uh, animations and diagrams to help visualize. And here, students are going to be creating their own visual based upon the reading. And so that's another way to transform science information. Where they're also going to transform information by building the vocabulary knowledge along with their concept knowledge um, through creating concept maps. And we'll talk about that in a second. So as they read the first article, they're going to start to draw their initial thoughts on the model of the DNA structure. And we're not just talking about building a double helix. Everybody kind of knows what that looks like. We're talking about labeling all the components and really understanding how all the pieces um, in that double helix, what they are and how they work together. And so they'll be re revising their ideas uh, with every pass at the information. And so when they start out reading that first Watson and Crick article, it's really important to let them know that they don't have to be right here. And in fact, there's some problems with what Watson and Crick originally thought, and they're going to be revising their ideas uh, as they continue to read, reflect, and think about DNA. And if you remember back to our training, um, when we talked about it together, we made a big point of saying, you don't have to be 100% right. Just get down what you think. Um, don't worry about it. If you don't fully understand it yet, you're building up your ideas when you're thinking about the first Watson and Crick article. So by the time they get to the textbook, they'll have their questions answered. Part of the beauty of this is creating those questions as they go. So um, they'll revise their model and then they'll think about how they understand the importance of the structure of DNA in making us who we are, right? So in, in how does it influence um, us and how the genetic material functions inside us every single day. So they'll be sort of thinking about those ideas as they read and draw and reflect on uh, DNA and its structure. So part of this is what I was talking about earlier where they're going to build their vocabulary knowledge along with their concept knowledge by beginning a concept map. And so here's an example of one uh, on DNA where you can kind of see the top structure is DNA and from there all these ideas branch out. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit 
bit better. So you can see it better here, um, that it's not just the concepts, it's how they're tied together. So if you're looking at all those connecting forms, DNA forms a double helix, which is made of two long twisted strands. So you get information within each of the bubbles that actually sort of defines what every piece of it is. Students are going to be working on this as a way to really learn um, the science vocabulary that they're going to need to understand. And so they'll be building this concept chart right from the beginning so that they can be thinking about it and part of their final exam their exam preparation is to be using this concept map as a way for self-testing. So the better job that they do now in putting it together, the easier it'll be for them to review for the exam. Because if you've noticed anything at all about this particular unit, there are lots and lots and lots of concepts and students are gonna to need to wait a way to organize it. And so they'll be reading a little bit more about concept mapping later on in the, in the unit but for now, they just sort of need to get going on thinking about how these ideas are connected, both thinking about definitionally, but also in the larger science concept. And so they're going to start doing that in this lesson. Um, but it doesn't have to look like that last example. Um, here's another one that starts with nucleic acids as its main idea and kind of branches out from there. But again, it's not just the term, it's how these ideas are connected together and how they work together um, to form the larger concept of DNA. So for this one, they'll be doing specifically DNA structure. And as they learn about the rest of the topics, they'll continue to add and add and add uh, to their concept map so that by the end, they have all the, the major concepts mapped out for them. The last thing that they're going to do in uh, this lesson is reflect. So think about the whys of learning. So we want students to reflect on the importance of understanding models, such as their diagram that they just made of DNA, to helping them understand concepts that are complex. So, you know, scientists model a lot of different information. So ask them to think about how did the drawing of the structure of DNA help you in understanding the concept? And you might even want, get, want to get students to share their diagrams so that they can see some similarities, what people are thinking, where they are in their concept building. Also, it's a good idea to talk about how using multiple sources can add both to your understanding and your model. And so scientists rarely just use one piece of information. They're pulling from multiple sources, and that's what we're trying to help students do within this unit as well. And then the last thing is we want them to really reflect on how do models help explain science concepts? And do you think you have a better concept now that you've built your own model? So it's not just looking at the models that's important, it's creating your own, which is helping you create understandings. And that right there is uh, lesson three in a nutshell.